Hello, this is Bino. Welcome back to my channel. I'm an arborist and a tree climber specialist. And what I like to do on my channel is share tree climbing tips with beginners and experts. What we're going to do today is um, I'm going to view a few videos that we found on the internet regarding tree care and I'll give you my reactions to them. Let's get to it. So we have the first one that's going to be up. It looks like someone felling a tree with an ax. Uh, here we go. They have a real, real wide notch, and it looks like it's more than, than it should be. It's like too deep. Not looking very successful. Oh, now they're using a chainsaw. I guess they realized that it, they weren't going to do it with an ax. Oh. No. Oh. So my, my take on this is it looks like, you know, in a notch, when you're, when you're making a notch, you really don't want it to be really deep into the wood. You want to just be maybe like one third of the trunk size. Um, it looks like they just, they carved out a huge portion of, um, of notch. It did look like it was facing the right way. Um, when they got to the back and they were hitting it with the ax, they might have cut through some of the holding wood. And then when they use the chainsaw, it looks like they probably cut the hinge. So, because if the notch was actually facing in the right direction, or it looked like to me, but when they use the chainsaw and they cut into it, then it looks like maybe they cut through the hinge. The hinge is meant to guide the, the tree down in the direction you want. But if you cut the hinge, then the tree can go pretty much any way, whatever. So if it's, if it's um, leaning one way, it can fall in the direction that it has a lean to. So my guess is that's what happened here. Well, let's see what's gonna happen next. Ooh, ladders, I they, they scare me. I like to be tied into a tree. Uh, I don't really feel comfortable in ladders. Myself, I'd rather be spiked in and, and removing a tree in that way. Doesn't look like, I mean, there's no PPE. He has no hard hat, no saddle climbing with a chainsaw not connected to him I, I don't know this is, doesn't look like it's going to end well they do have a rope which is good so it looks like they want to pull it in the opposite direction of, of the of the guy climbing but i don't know the ladder doesn't even look like it's attached and it's it an extension ladder the angle of the ladder doesn't even look correct i don't know if they made a notch cut My hands are getting sweaty here. <laughs> this is scaring me. Ooh, there it goes. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, you could see something like that was bound to happen. Uh, that, you know, basically PPE and, and uh, in a ladder, even an extension ladder, it looked like the angle was, was way too steep. When you're using an extension ladder, you have to have a certain angle. There's a way to measure it out. Um, from the ground where you put your feet to the base of the ladder and you put your palms out um, to the rung that's in front of you. Now that's that's a measurement that's, um, you know, it gives you a, the right angles. Further, the, the guy didn't have any PPE, no hard hat, no safety glasses, um, didn't have any gear on. That was pretty high. It was close to 30 foot looking, I, I would say. Um, not sure if he made a notch cut. It looks like they had a lot of tension on that rope. So when the, the top released, it pushed back. Definitely, if you're, if you're not tied in, I mean, you see the results. That was just, uh, he's probably pretty, pretty messed up. I, I bet he broke an ankle or something. All right, so here we go to the next one. Ooh. Oh, kickback. No way. S okay, so... Yeah, that, that, he was using the tip, and it looks like he caught the top of the tip on, on the top of the, um, the, the roof there. And, and you see how wicked quick kickback is. I mean, you, it's really difficult to hold. Um, it looked like he had two hands on the, on the chainsaw, which is good. But um, the technique and, and where he was holding it, he probably was loose-armed. He needed to be, um, like, like tight. Um, it, 
it doesn't look like that was the right tool for the job. I mean, for me, that I would have rather used something different. Let's see, finish it off and see what happens. Oh, now we go to another one. It looks like, oh, hold on. Okay, so they've made a notch cut and it looks like they're gonna, they're already on their back cut. From here, and this is probably not the best angle, but from here, it looks like it has a back lean. Um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe something like that could work. Um, I guess it would depend on, on what he does on, on his back cut and, and how much of a, a, of a, a hinge he leaves. So I don't, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I, I would, if it were me doing something like this, I think I would want to have a rope tied really high on this, this stem. Um, to me in the video so far, it doesn't look like he has it tied. So let's see, let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, Ooh, it looks like he might've just cut through his hinge. So at, at the point where, where it lifted, you could just see like, usually if you have a good size hinge, then it's not just going to pop off like that and go the opposite direction. Myself, I would rather have a, a rope tied to it and I would want to leave a big hinge, especially if it has a lean or a back or side lean. I would leave a bigger hinge than I normally would on a perfect fouling job. So if, if my tree was straight and, and I'm going to drop it, there's no wind, everything's going to be perfect, I might use wedges, I would have maybe like a 10% um, hinge, you know. But on something where I have a back lean, I would want to have more hinge and try to do something to guide that hinge so it starts um, rip. You can hear like the hinge cracking and breaking and guiding the, the whole stem where you want it to go. On this one, it looks, you know, it's really hard. I didn't get a real good view of the hinge, but the way it popped up off of the stump, it looks like he cut through his hinge, allowing the tree to just do the opposite thing, just go toward where the lean was. Let's see what the end of that is. Oh, here we go to the next one. Oh no. So, so <laughs> this guy, it looks like he just did an angle cut and it might be dead, like a complete dead tree. So dead wood is horrible because it doesn't do what you want it to do. Not like, like green wood, you know, it, it's more pliable. You can make a notch cut and you can angle it and it'll, it'll cling on and do you know, pretty much go a lot of the times where you want it to go. But deadwood, it's not reliable at all. And, and you really have to be careful. On this, it looks like there was no notch cut. It looks like he just angled the cut. And so the result of an angle cut with no notch, um, there's no hinge to try to guide it. When he made that cut, it just slid off and straight down and it got hit by those other branches. Yeah, those kind of, especially the thickness of the wood, so if you're cutting something that's like um, six inches in diameter, at that point, even if it's dead wood, you should be making a notch cut. Um, at the very least, an utter cut. An, you know, a, a difference between a notch, a notch is where you make like a, an angle, and an undercut would be just at least cut into the wood. But like, the, the, for me, if it's like six inches and greater, it's better to do a notch cut. What harm is it? It's better to be safe than sorry. Um, on the, this one, it looks like he didn't make a notch, just an angle cut and that it was dead it just slid off and came straight down that's 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 a tough situation well, yeah oh there it goes they show it yeah oh he he got lucky i didn't see that part where the other branch saved him so here your notch cut pretty good size it doesn't look like it's too bad of a notch kind of high for my taste the back cut i mean Yeah, this guy is just, I think he's probably the homeowner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. So, oh, man, can I? On, when, you, when it disconnected, it looks like he cut through the hinge that was further away from the house. So, um, there was, when, when it ripped up and it, and it popped, you could see there was fibers on that stub, stump. So, I, it looks like what he did is he cut through that was away from the building, all the hinge wood. So the hinge wood really holds it to, to guide it. The fact that he cut through the stuff that was further away from the building, when the weight of the tree 
instead of it just hinging down, he cut through this so it popped in this direction. He could, it wouldn't guide hidden the tree down because all of that, like more than half of it looked like it was cut. So instead of it going the planned area, the hinge on this side just ripped open and the weight of the tree carried it toward the, the property. Ooh, bad for that guy, but it's gonna cost him a lot of money. Anyhow, so um, here goes another guy and, and this one looks like there's no PPE also. The, the other guy we just watched, no PPE, probably a homeowner doing it. My guess is the same thing with, with this is a, a, probably a homeowner gonna drop his tree, which is kind of way out in the open. Looks like nothing should go wrong maybe. But anyhow, let's, let's see what happens. Like really dead. Oh no, PPE, he got lucky. So um, yeah, there you go. So the tree's really, really dead, really brittle. Um, it looks like his hinge and everything was about right. Well, I mean, his hinge actually was way deep. I, I wouldn't have had a hinge as, as deep as that. But you could see in the stump here, there's a lot of hinge wood. So it went the way he wanted it to go, which is great. But the fact that this thing is so dead, when sometimes when you do a dead tree, when it hits the ground, it can shatter. So, I mean, that basically what that did, it was probably a downward branch. When it hit, the impact of the, the weight of the tree caused it to flip up. Guy's lucky he didn't get hit with that, that piece of wood flying toward him. Whoa. Yeah, but PPE would help. Um, something like that, you get hit on the head without PPE. Uh, having a hard hat, that would be at least something, you know. Doesn't even look like he has safety glasses and maybe not even boots. Anyhow, let's, let's go to the next one. Oh. So it looks like the guy's spiking. Um, I'm hoping he's removing the tree because really, if you're... Sp oh, wait. Oh. oh, my God. So, oh, so my guess is that he was um, spiking around without a lanyard or, or maybe he took his... It was really tough to see it, but... Um, you know, if you're spiking a tree, you definitely need to keep your lanyard connected. Um, I, I've seen guys just get out to a tree and just spike up all the way up. Um, and then when they get to the top, they'll put a lanyard on. Um, really, I mean, it's, it's, it's better that if you're going to spike a tree, that you put your lanyard on and you keep it. And if you're going to be, if you're going to go over branches, that you have a secondary lanyard where, where you maneuver over a branch, you connect, and then you spike up a little, then throw another lanyard over, and then disconnect the other one. Um, if you're going to do it in that way, but you should never, ever disconnect and just hold your hands. I mean, you could be a stellar climber and you could be doing it for years. And, and all it takes is, is something to affect your hand, your grip. Like you could be spiking up and say you get a piece of bark, you put your hand on it and it slides off. I mean, and then you're done. I mean, that guy looked like it had to been about at least 40 feet. At 40 feet, a fall from there with spikes on, oh my man, that, that could be... I mean, he could have long-term damage to the body. Uh, yeah, when you're using spikes, you, you should always be lanyard in and have three points of connection. Uh, and, and that's simple to do, just even having a secondary lanyard. So um, the next one up, it looks like a, a palm tree. Um, let, let's see what's happening here. Of uh, palm tree rescue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When it comes to when it comes to palm tree Mexican fan palms, well, here in California, I, I know I can't speak for everywhere, everywhere, but I know um, Mexican fan palms that you know when it, when it's about three years of dead growth underneath that palm, you should never try to trim the palm from underneath. Um, it's best to use a boom truck or to throw a rope over the tree and ascend over the three years of growth. What happens with the palms is that that when usually when the palm gets past 40 feet tall at the 40 foot level, those dead fronds, they're easy to come off. Well, kind of easy to come off. Yes and no, because what happens is the way they're they're put together, they overlap. So they they can slough off easier, but it's they won't slough off because they're they're tight like a weaved basket. Now, once you get to the 40 foot mark, if you're cutting the dead fronds and you hit that 40 foot mark and then you get that that area that's easier to slough off, but they're connected so they don't just fall off, 
that whole amount of palm, dead palm fronds will slide down the Mexican fan palm and come down on the climber. So if the climber is in the spikes and he's underneath and he's cutting and he hits that, that solid dead area and now it's the soft dead and then that whole tube of dead fronds, which depending on how much dead it is, will weight down on him and he'll be stuck. He won't be able to come out. He might not even be able to turn his chainsaw off. Yeah, that, that's happened a lot here and, and that's, that's what's happening here. Um, the guy was probably spiking from underneath, not knowing that it's not safe to go from underneath and trim um, especially with uh, you know that much dead growth it's got to be from a top so let's see what happens here yeah so there it goes see how that sloughed off <sighs> looks like the guy's alive yeah 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 and they're able to get him down yeah yeah good Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes the next one. Looks like a dead top. Guy looks like he has PPE, has the right kind of gear. What's he doing? Oh, it's electrical wires near him though, huh? They're not really electric. They look like they're insulated, but, oh no, no, no. What's he gonna do? No, no. To me, okay, so secondary lines are, are not as much of a threat, but you, you ought to be careful. Um, yeah, it looked like the guy had PPE and he got it disconnected. I don't know if it was the best thing for him to do to be um, onto those cable lines. It looked more like cable, maybe insula insulated lines. Um, lucky that there wasn't anything like open. Oh, who knows? Maybe he inspected and he felt comfortable doing it. Um, for me, I try to stay away from that kind of stuff. So here, let's see what's next. Yeah, that's pretty high. Oh, you can see he has, he's, okay, so he's near electrical lines and it looks like he's already dropped a branch on, it looks like a three phase line there. Um, it looks like, you know, from the video, it looks like high powered lines. I can't, can't be certain, but let, let's see what happens. I mean, he's kind of, it looks like the tree's a little bit far away, but from this angle, I, I really can't tell. I'm guessing if he dropped it, it's probably, maybe it's within 10 feet. Of, of the electrical lines and, and really in the in the tree care field if a tree is within 10 feet of electrical lines unless you're a certified electrical tree trimmer you really shouldn't be touching the tree um you know i can't really say it because this angle it could be 20 feet away I, I don't know and maybe it was a cut and just flew that far but um you know if it's within 10 feet um it, sh it should have probably been uh, handled first by maybe um, edison or electrical line company clearing it and then now it's time for the the regular climber to go and do work so let's see what happens oh yeah see it's starting to smoke so because the the branch is on two phases now it's like double the power it's catching fire yeah not not a good situation Ooh, ooh, ooh. that could that could blow out an area it could blow a transformer you could knock out a whole area wow Whoa. Okay. So one of the things that I've become is a, a ISA certified utility specialist. And in that, you, you know, you learn that there's things that, you know, electrical, you have to respect it. And there are rules in trimming near electrical line, you know, trimming trees in po proximity to electrical lines. Um, you know, within t pretty much basically within 10 feet, you shouldn't touch a tree. Even if the tree's not touching it, but it's within 10 feet of electrical lines. Not really the cable and guy lines, guy wires, but when it's um, main power, yeah, you should do your best not to do work over or near it. And if that happens, like you could get a hold of the, the company, electrical company in your area, and I'm sure if you ask them to trim um, away from it for you to do your work, they'd be willing to do that for you what happens if you get caught up in the electrical line good chance you're going to die um, no way around it there's a few different things that can happen you can have an indirect contact so you could be you could be climb, trim, you know climbing a tree and you could touch a branch and that branch that you're touching um, rests on an electrical line that electricity can go from 
the line through the branch to you and, and you get electrocuted. Or you get direct contact where you touch it directly. Um, you, and sometimes, you know, that happens. If you're working, you might not notice that you're in the tree, your back leans and you hit a wire. Um, not good. And just like this guy where he was trimming, it looked like he, he felt like he could do it. That branch must have gotten away from him and landed on both phases. You know, just just something to try to stay away from when, when your electric lines, you know, if you're, you know, get certified in it or have someone who's certified to clear it so you can do your work. So there you have it. You have some of my reaction to the tree um, care videos that we got on the Internet, some of those fails. Um, and I'll tell you that I'm. I've had accidents in my time. One that comes to mind is when the guy was removing that dead piece and it whacked him on the top of the head. So I, I, I did a situation like that. This was years ago, more than 25 years ago. I was in a boom truck. It was a dead tree. You know, and at that time, I felt like I had a lot of experience. Um, didn't think about making a notch cut, and I did an angle cut just like the guy did. And exactly what happened to him happened to me. Uh, you know, I know that from experience. <laughs> it was a pretty good size. It was probably more than eight inch diameter. I thought I'd cut it, slide off and go right direction. But no, why, well, exactly the, how he did it. When it let loose, it came straight down. And those other branches, luckily I had a hard hat on. Like five other branches hit me. And they weren't, they weren't too big, but they broke on my head. Um, never did that again. And I'll never do it again. You know, in, in this trade, it's important to, you know, pay attention, learn what you want to do. Say like some of those homeowners, they were taking some large trees and right next to houses. If, if you don't really have experience in it, it might be better to hire it out to the professionals. Um, a lot of, well, I can't tell you that every professional knows how to do it. But I think you'll have better luck if you do hire someone with more experience to take out something that large toward your house. The expense alone for a tree landing on a house, I, I couldn't imagine that. Or it could go worse and maybe land on the person removing it. Um, that could be a horrible situation. And in working around electrical lines, yeah, you, you want to have somebody that has experience. And if you don't have experience around electrical lines, it's best not to do the job. That palm tree, the palm tree situation, yeah, really be careful. And if the palm tree has more than three years worth of dead growth below the green fronds, it's better not to trim from underneath, either get a boom truck or enter the top of the tree with ropes. Yeah, that, that could, could save lives, just having that information alone. Yeah, there you go. I, I hope you guys enjoyed these reactions to me. If you guys have videos you want to send me and see my reactions to, I'd appreciate it. Just send it our way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share our videos. Take care. We'll see you next time.